In the South Seas, there is a cargo cult of people. During the war, they saw airplanes land with lots of good materials, and they want the same thing to happen now. So they've arranged to imitate things like runways, to put fires along the sides of the runways, to make a wooden hut for a man to sit in with two wooden pieces on his head like headphones, and bars of bamboo sticking out like antennas. He's the controller, and they wait for the airplanes to land. They're doing everything right. The form is perfect. It looks exactly the way it looked before. But it doesn't work. No airplanes land. So I call these things cargo cult signs because they follow all the apparent precepts and forms of scientific investigation. But they're missing something essential because the planes don't land.
the attempt to inflict as many casualties as possible. That is a Middle Eastern trait. The fact that it was such a powerful bomb in Oklahoma City immediately drew investigators to consider deadly parallels that all have roots in the Middle East. ABC News has learned that the FBI has asked the U.S. military to provide up to 10 Arabic speakers to help in the investigation.
at the heart of how this new American Orientalism operates is a threatening and demonized figure of the Islamic terrorist that is emphasized by journalists and Hollywood. The so-called independent media in a liberal society like this, in effect, are so lazy and are controlled by interests that are commercial and political at the same time that there, there is no investigative reporting. It's just basically repeating the line of the government. Only eight days ago, I concluded a broadcast on the World Trade Center bombing by telling you what senior U.S. law enforcement officials were telling us, that the threat of Muslim extremists operating within the United States is an ongoing danger, something we'll have to live with from now on.